What's up you guys, welcome back to this week's Manga Sutra Manga Review and in this week's video we're going to be talking about a sending horror drama called Kiyoshitsu Jibaku Club. Now the manga starts off with our main character sitting on the train when an elderly man gets on and another adult demands that our main character get out of their seat so the elderly man can sit down. Now when our main character doesn't respond to the adult, the adult begins to tug and yank on the main character's arm until their prosthetic falls off. Now, instead of being a decent person and apologizing for being a dick, the adult just doubles down and chastises the main character for not telling him that he had a prosthetic and making him look like an idiot before he leaves. Now, our main character is unfazed by this. He puts back on his prosthetic as he looks down at the ground at a newspaper that is reporting a copycat bombing similar to the Shiro Iwa Junior High School bombing. Now. We then later on see our main character looking at an online video of the copycat bomber from Yokohama Junior High who explains his reason for bombing his class as being that he was bullied for a year or so and that for a while he is contemplating getting revenge and taking out the rest of his class. We then see our main character looking over at a set of explosives sitting right next to their laptop. We then get a transition to a school building in which several people are waiting for a person named Shindo who invited them. We then see that Shindo is the guy from the train and that all of them are well acquainted, all of them are victims and survivors of the Shiro Iwa Junior High School bombing and Takumi Shindo begins to take off his prosthetic arm as everyone one by one takes off their prosthetics and places them on the table. Takumi Shindo then explains that the reason he brought them all here today was because after years of research and investigation they came to the deduction that one of the survivors gave the bomber the explosives in which several people were killed. Now we then get a transition to another plot that's going on in the manga in which at a private junior high school a girl is standing in front of her class wearing an explosive vest as she calmly and coldly states that she is going to take out the rest of her class or she's going to take out all of her class. Now, as you can imagine, most of them are in disbelief. Most of them think it's a joke. Most of them don't believe that she's serious. They think that this is a part of the bomb drill going on and two of her classmates chastise her and joke that she should blow herself up. Now. When this girl named Serizawa takes off one of her explosives and throws out the window and it hits the pavement and absolutely demolishes the pavement in an explosion, they begin to panic and try to rush for the door, in which Serizawa explains to them that she tampered with the door and that there is no opening it, and that if her finger leaves the trigger that the explosives will go off, and that everybody should sit down and play the game that she wants to play. Now. The thing I like about this manga is that it doesn't beat around the bush. Unlike a lot of other horror mangas, it doesn't go into chapters among chapters of exposition to lay the groundwork or explain things in the plot. We have a relatively straightforward and easy to understand plot or easy to follow plot. We have Takumi Shindo who is the victim slash survivor of a high school bombing and he is trying to figure out who or why someone gave the bomber of their high school the bomb. And then we have Serizawa in her own plot, a victim of bullying, who herself is strapped with an explosive vest, who intends to take out her class as she has them play a game in which she makes them suffer and humiliate themselves for her own amusement. Now, with this manga, we also see with these two plots that are parallel to each other, this cause and effect. We see Serizawa's plot being the cause. We see someone who is a victim of bullying in their class, and we see them lashing out the only way that they know how, and that is to react violently, to take everyone else out with them. And this isn't just being spiteful. As we see with Serizawa's case, her logic, her reasoning, her rationale behind wearing the explosive vest and taking out the entire class with her is because it wasn't just the fact she was bullied by two people, it was the fact that while she was being bullied by those two people, the rest of her class did nothing. And that the rest of the class 
Though they are bystanders, they are not innocent. We see that with the teacher, he even said that Serizawa being bullied was natural and that it was supposed to be an outlet for other students to get out their own pent up and pent up negative emotions and anger and frustration. And that Serizawa should, for the most part, just take it. And we see this bystander mentality in real life as well. And I think one of the popular cases was a little girl, a child that was hit by a truck in China, in which several people, several bystanders walk past the girl who is lying in the street, critically wounded, critically injured, and they did nothing. No one called for an ambulance, no one called for help. They just walked by, they saw her, they just kept it moving, they didn't do anything. And we see this, um, this theme this theme of frustration and this theme that inaction or lack of action is one of the main motives behind these bombings. We see this with the Yokohama um, Junior High School copycat bomber where they were bullied and they decided to react violently and lash out at the entire class. We see this with um, the Shiro Iwa Junior High School bomber in which they were bullied by a few students in the class but because Many members of the class did not do anything to staunch the bullying or stop the bullying or to intercede. The Shiro Iwa High School bomber lashed out and the rest of the class paid the price. And we see in Takumi Shindo's plot the effects, the aftermath of the bombings. We see the victims, we see the physical damage and the scars that it leaves upon them. And we also see in some sense a damaged um, a damaged mindset. You have all these prosthetics sitting on the table and it's like one of them said, it's like a mutilated corpse. And then another states that if they took a picture and posted it, that it would be really popular on social media. There's this numbness to the reality of their situation. There's a numbness to the prosthetics. There's a numbness to the damage that has been inflicted on them. And to see these two plots going parallel to one another is interesting, to say the least. It's interesting. And I think that this also makes the manga, in my opinion, a great manga because we get basically two different sub-genres of a horror manga in one. We get a basic whodunit in Takumi Shindo's plot as well as the horror survival game in Serizawa's plot. And we get all of this wrapped up in one manga. And we have all of this happening at the same time parallel to one another. And I think that's just something you don't see too much often. And the characters, in my opinion, are a lot more refreshing than with the bug survival horror video I did a week ago in which the characters lacked any sense of self-preservation, in which they were just absolute assholes for just the sake of being assholes. And in this manga, we see Takumi Shindo is down to earth. He's smart, he's deductive, he's well thought out, he's well planned. He has went to great lengths to research the explosive. He's went to great lengths to um, go to the bomber's house, to speak to the bomber's father, to remember certain details of the very bombing itself. Who sat where? What was the blast radius? Um, why certain members of their group, why certain survivors would have motives to give the bomber the explosives? And we see the same or similar level of calculating with Serizawa where she tinkers with the door so nobody can leave. She has the trigger set up so if her finger leaves the trigger the explosive vest goes off. We see this cold calculated um, aspect of her where she doesn't get heated when she's pretty much taunted and insulted by her classmates. She just keeps it moving. She knows what she's going to do. She's confident and she's assured of herself. She has the game structure pretty much well set she has everyone vote for one another and then the games are you know the challenges get more and more and more demanding of the participants and I like that I like that it's a lot better than just seeing a bunch of idiots dying off just for the sake of dying off because they're being stupid it's it's refreshing 
and I would recommend reading Kiyoshitsu Jibaku Club just on the plot alone. Now, the artwork in itself is amazing as well. Takumi Shindo's um, character style is, in my opinion, very good. I think Takumi Shindo looks good. I also think Serizawa looks good and attractive, in my opinion. Now, she may not have too much of a nose, but that's... that's who cares about a nose, okay? Who cares about a nose? Now, we also see with the um, bombers, there is a disturbing... Um, there is a disturbing art style to them in a sense. We see with the Shiro Iwa High School bombing, the lanky hair and the um, depressed, if not very disturbed, melancholic look to them. And we see the same thing with Seri's eye with the rings on her eyes, the lanky hair, the small, if not non-existent nose. And we see a similar thing with the Yokohama High School bomber. But with the Yokohama Junior High School bomber, they didn't have a depressed or melancholic loner look to them like Serizawa and Shiro Iwa's um, Junior High School bomber did. With the Yokohama Junior High School bomber, it was just more of a simplistic um, certainty. He was very sure what he was going to do. He, he just stated it as a matter of fact. I was bullied. I'm going to take everyone else out with me. That's just a matter of fact, you know, I'm doing this because I want to get even with my bullies. And that's how it is in the real world. That is how it is in the real world with some of these, um, with some killers, with some murderers, with some terrorists. And it, it's, it's not sometimes this passionate explosion of rage. Sometimes it's just this cold level of precision. Sometimes it's just this random act or random thought of violence of lashing out and just affecting those around you and this is definitely a sensitive topic to be talking about YouTube and this is definitely a very um, colorful manga to be doing a video on and posting on YouTube but I might not be able to monetize it but who cares um, would I recommend reading Kiyoshitsu Jibaku Club yes and I think it would offer a lot of insight into bullying with the real world and with how we should take things today. That sometimes inaction does have consequences. Sometimes not doing something or not saying anything does have consequences. Even though we may not think it will splash back on us, it does have its own consequences. It does have its own effects. And we can see that in this manga. Now, if you guys like my content and you want to help me, you want to support this channel, I would suggest pledging to my Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. The link is going to be in the comments. Or you can go to my YouTube channel and you can look in the little upper right corner for my Facebook page, my Patreon channel, and the Google community. And, you know, you can pledge. There's a $1 a month pledge. There's a $3 a month pledge whatever you can do is fine even subscribing even liking the video is fine love you guys bye